Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we will be learning about matrix visual of Power BI. Before I begin, I must clarify there are two similar looking icons. The first one is table and the second one is matrix. Now matrix is very similar to Excel's pivot table. You have the concept of row, column and value. I am going to divide this learning into two parts. The first part I'll focus on conditional formatting. Why? Because it has so many features such as background color, font color, data bars and many other settings. In the second part, I will talk about formatting, which are very simple, but makes your visual look elegant. So once you watch both the parts, you will be in a better position to use this setting for your visualization. So just a heads up. This is part one and the second one will be part two. So let's begin. Before our screens lies one simple slicer based on year. Based on the user's selection of that year, your months are decided and you will have total sales against them. All the 12 months data are further divided into four regions and you will see the same setup in matrix number two. Next, you will notice the first matrix looks like a heat map. Higher the intensity of the sale, darker the color. And you can validate the dark intensity of the color by the number on the right hand side matrix. So our focus will be, how do we use matrix visual, change the format of that matrix visual so that we get a visualization like this. So I'll be moving to the next tab called matrix one practice. So let's begin. I click on the white area of the canvas and then I bring along one matrix. Once I have the visualization, let me use the fields area to fill up all these fields and get my data set. Once I do that, then I'll be using the format button to activate certain conditional formatting features. So first, I look for month. I'm referring to the month which is being derived from the date hierarchy of the order date and that order date is coming from the orders table. This data is being referred from the same data set called sales superstore. So I bring the months to the rows. I can see it placed vertically. I transfer it to columns and I'll see the same thing presented horizontally. So it's completely your choice. How do you want to place it? Next, I look out for region. I transfer the region field to columns and I have all the headings such as central, east, south and west. Now the fonts may look a little smaller. So I go to format. I type in size. And then when I see grid option, I increase the size to 15. There you go. I'll increase the boundary of this matrix. And if you wish to adjust this manually, you can do it right now, or you can also check out the column width option from the format. Let me correct the spelling. You can auto size or do it manually. That's completely on you. You'll understand this better when you have values inside your matrix. So as of now, I look for sales item. I put that inside the matrix by simple drag and drop. The result is the fields have been placed under the heading values. So before I move on, let me summarize. You can see the months under rows. You can see region under columns and you can see the numbers under values. Next, I go back to formatting and I type in display units. You can also type in just one word called display. Now, why would I do that? because each number in my matrix are difficult to read. I would want to make it compact so that they are only presented in millions or thousands. And to do that, I would take the help of this tab called display units. I try choosing thousands. See the result. How about using millions? Of course, everything shows zeros because the numbers aren't that great. So I'll choose thousands again. So far, so good and let me extend the matrix boundary a bit. Next, let me remove this keyword from the search box and then straight away head towards something called conditional formatting. Now in this, I'll spend some extra time because this is extremely important. 
What if you activate background color? Notice, higher the sale, higher the intensity of the blue color. How about you want to disable the font color? Again, you get a better view and easier way to understand where are the numbers higher. In either of the cases, if you want to change the colors, then you would have to go to advanced controls. How about I go to advanced controls of background color and maybe I'll just tick mark diverging. This gives me an additional color in the middle and all the shades will be placed accordingly. How about I press OK? There you go. Well, it doesn't look beautiful, so I'll go back to advanced control and disable that for now. Be aware that you also have option under here which says format by what template. So you can choose from the drop down rules and rules could be based on negative versus positive number. You can also choose field value. But let me for now go back to color scale and re-choose the options. Based on which field? Let me type in sales. Automatically summarization is sum. Of course, you can change that. Minimum is light blue and the highest is dark blue and I'll press OK. Next, let me show you another variation. Let me disable the background color and let me keep the font color on. But to be fully understand this font color, I would go back to my matrix field and put in profit instead of sales. The reason to do so is because I also want to see some positive and negative number at the same time. Now I go back to conditional formatting of the matrix and this time I choose font color. However, I would want negative number to be represented by red color and to do so, I go to advanced controls. This time I choose rules. So I say if the value is greater than or equal to and write a really large negative number, something like this. Change the next option to number and say is less than or equal to zero. If that's the case, I would want a color red. Let me add a new rule. And in that I say if the number is greater than zero and is less than a very large positive number. 